Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be learning how to schedule tasks using the cron utility. Now you can use cron for pretty much anything, but you see it used a lot to handle things like automated backups, uh, rotating log files, syncing files between remote machines, or clearing out temporary folders and things like that. Now, just about anyone can find a lot of uses for cron tasks, but it becomes especially useful once you start doing a uh, system administration type of work. So let's see how we can set this up. Now we can schedule the list of commands that we want to run using something called the cron table. And the command is cron tab for short. So first we can see a list of the current users cron jobs with the command cron tab dash L. So we can see that we don't have any scheduled jobs yet for this user. So let's go ahead and add some. Now, when we edit our cron tab, we're gonna to have to use an editor. So for most operating systems, th this is gonna to default to Vim, and that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. But if you aren't comfortable using Vim and would like to use something like Nano instead, then you can set this environment variable called editor, and you can set that to na Nano. So we could say something like uh, export editor, and I believe that nano is in user bin nano. So if you set that value, then when you edit your cron tab, then it would use nano instead of vim. Um, and also I think if you're on Ubuntu, then it'll ask you to select your editor uh, when you first try to edit your cron tab. But like I said, I'm just gonna keep the default of vim for this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit our cron tab. So we can edit our list of cron jobs by saying cron tab dash E. And if we run that, then it opens up our editor. And in Vim, if you wanna insert something, you can press I to put you, uh, yourself in insert mode. And it says insert down here at the bottom. So we're just gonna start off with some simple commands just to see how this works. And then we'll look at some more practical examples once we get the hang of it. So on each line, we're gonna specify when we're going to run our command and also the command that we wanna run. So let me grab a comment from my snippets here that will make this a little more clear. So I'm going to copy these and paste them in here and then minimize that again. Okay, so each line is going to look like this right here. We're going to have five values that specify when we want the job to run and then the job that we want to execute. Now, first we specify the minute and then the hour and then the day of the month and then the month and then the day of the week. Now we can use exact values or we can use an asterisk to match every value. So for example, one of the simplest schedules would be an asterisk for all five values. Um, so if I go ahead and type out a line here and I'm putting spaces between each of these. So we have asterisk for all five of our values and then the command that we wanna run. And we'll just make this simple. I'm just gonna echo out hello and we wanna put this into a temporary file. So I'll send this to the temporary folder into a file just called text.txt. And to save this in Vim, we can press escape and then a colon W. And I'll also quit out of here for now with the uh, Q. So now that we're back to our menu here, let's list out our cron tab to, see, to make sure that that uh, was saved successfully. Okay, and now we can see our command that we added here. So let's go over exactly what this is saying. So what this is saying is that we want to run this echo command and send it to that file. We want to run that uh, on every minute of every hour of every day of the week or every day of the month on every month on any day of the week. Now I know that that sounds confusing, but we're gonna see a lot of examples and we'll get the hang of it after a while. But basically what that says is that we're just gonna run this command every minute of every day. So there's a good chance that cron has already uh, run this echo command and appended the word hello to our test.txt file in the temp folder. So let's go ahead and cat that file uh, to see if that has run already. So we can see that our command was successfully scheduled and run through our cron system. Um, okay, now let's look at some different combinations for how to schedule uh, when our job is going to be run. So to do this, let's go back and edit our cron job again. Okay, so the asterisk will match any value, but we can also use exact values. So the minutes can be anything between zero and 59. So if I was to set this minute here to 30, then what this would mean is that our command would be run on the 30th minute of every hour of every day of the month on every month on any day of the week. 
So if I look at what my local time is now, it's about 1040. So that means that this job uh, would now get run 30 past the hour uh, for every hour. So this would run, since it's 1040 now, this would run at 1130 and then 1230 and then 130 and 230 and so on. Now the hour can be anything between 0 and 23. So 0 for midnight and uh, 23 for 11 p.m. at night. So if we were to change this to a 5, so now this line is saying that we're going to run our command uh, 30 minutes past the fifth hour on every single day. So at 5.30 every single day it will run that command. And we can continue just going down the line of values here. So the days of the month can be anything between 1 and 31. So if we were to set the day of the month to 1, now what our line is saying is that we're going to run our command uh, 30 minutes past 5 on the first of every month. So basically on the first of every month at 5.30 a.m., it'll run our command. So basically now our command is only going to run once a month. And just like you might expect, the months can be anything between 1 and 12. And if we were to set this to, you know, something like a value of, of 1 as well, then now we're scheduling our command to run once a year. So it would run at 5.30 a.m. on the first of the month of the first month, which is January. Now this last value is for day of the week. And this is really useful because sometimes we want to schedule commands to run at a certain time on a specific day. And we can see our comment above that zero is Sunday and uh, six is Saturday. So let's say that I wanted to back up some files at midnight every Monday. So to do this, we could just set our day of the week to one, which is Monday. And then we want to put an asterisk for the month and then a, an asterisk for the day of the month and then a zero for the hour because we want it to be midnight and zero for the minute as well. So just to go over that one more time, we have zero for our minute and zero for our hour, which is midnight. A combination of two zeros here is midnight. And then for any day of the month, uh, for any month, and then on the day of the week, we want one, which is Monday. So every Monday at midnight, run this command. Okay, so now let's look at some more advanced schedules. So we can create a lot of different schedules with uh, what we've learned so far, but what if we had a script that we wanted to run on the first and 15th of every month? Now to do this, we can use a comma operator to specify multiple values. So for example, let's say that we wanted to run a command at midnight on the first and the 15th of every month. So we've already seen that a zero for the minutes and a zero for the hour is midnight. And now we want it to run on the first day and the 15th day of the month. So we can use a comma operator to do multiple values here. So I can put in a one comma 15, and then we want an asterisk for any month and then an asterisk for any day of the week. So again, that's a zero for the minutes, zero for the hours, which is midnight, and then for the day of the month, one comma 15, which means it'll run on both the first and the 15th of every month. Now, one common mistake that people make when they schedule cron tasks uh, is that it's important that we put a specific time like we did here, like with midnight, when we want to run something on a certain day like this, because some people make the mistake of leaving these as asterisks here, and they think that this will run on uh, this command on the 1st and the 15th of every month as well. But what this actually does is that it will run your command every minute of the day on the 1st and the 15th. So it'll never run your command whenever it's not the 1st or the 15th of the month, but whenever it is the 1st or it is the 15th, then it's gonna run our command every minute of that day. And that's likely not what we wanted. So to run it once that day, then we have to select a specific time, which in this case we're choosing midnight, but you can choose whatever you like. Okay, so now let's look at how we can schedule intervals. So what if we wanted to run a command every 10 minutes? Then you could use multiple values here and say, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on. But that's pretty ugly, and it also becomes completely unmanageable if we wanted to run, you know, something every two minutes or something like that. So instead, we can use the forward slash operator to do an interval. So to run something every 10 minutes, we could set, uh, just put in an asterisk here and then a forward slash 10. And then for these other values, I'm just going to 
go ahead and fill in all asterisks for those. So we have an asterisk here for our minute, and then that forward slash 10, which actually says we just want to run this every 10 minutes, and then asterisk for every other value, which just means every 10 minutes of every day. So then if you wanted to change that to run something every five minutes of every day, then you could just change that 10 to a five and you're good to go. And this works with the other values as well. So let's say that you wanted to run a command every three days, then we could put a zero for the minutes, a zero for the hours, and then for the days, uh, just a forward slash three. And again, uh, that common mistake that I mentioned earlier, if you want to run something every few hours or every few days, then you have to be sure that you set the minutes and the hours to zero, because if you made the mistake of leaving these as asterisks, then it would just run every minute on every third day uh, instead of once every three days. So you have to be careful with that. Okay, so lastly, let's look at ranges. So let's say that we wanted to run a command every hour from midnight to 5 a.m. So to do this, we can use the dash operator to specify a range. So I'm just going to use an asterisk for the day here. For the minute, I will keep at zero. And let's say that we wanted to run a command every hour from midnight to 5 a.m. So we can keep this as zero, then put in a dash five. So the schedule that we currently have here would run this echo command uh, every hour between zero to five of every day. So another example might be, you know, something that you might want to schedule seasonally. So let's say that you worked for a university and you had certain scripts that you wanted to run at noon every day during the summer months while the uh, students were on break or something. Then, you know, you could write something like, you know, I want to run this at noon um, every day of the month but only through the months, you know, five to eight, which I think is uh, May to August. Okay, so now let's do one more advanced example that ties a few of these things together. So let's say that we wanted to run a command every 30 minutes during regular business hours. And common business hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, so let's write this out. So we want to run every 30 minutes uh, Monday through Friday uh, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, so I'm just going to make these all asterisks for now, and then we will change these as we go. Okay, so first we wanna run a command every 30 minutes, so we can use our interval and do every 30 minutes. And now we want our hours to be between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So that would be 9 a.m. And then 5 p.m. in military time is just 17. And we also only want this command to run uh, between Monday and Friday. So we would go here to the days of the week and we would do 1, which is Monday, through 5, which is Friday. So that's a little more complicated of a command, um, but you, these cron tasks are really versatile and allow you to create you know, some complicated schedules. Okay, so hopefully at this point, you have a pretty good idea for how to schedule jobs to run on just about any schedule or interval that you would like. Um, now, as one last example, let me grab a couple of cron jobs from my snippets file here, and they can just give some ideas for what multiple cron jobs might look like. So I'll just grab a couple of these out of here and paste these in, then minimize that. Okay, so one thing about editing your cron tab is not to be shy about writing comments. So I usually leave this entire timing comment here at the top of my cron tab just as a reference in case I forget what one of these uh, values are. And then I also comment each cron task. So for our first job here, uh, this is to remove the contents of our temp folder at 5 p.m. on every Friday. So you can see we have a zero for the minute, uh, five for the hour. So that's actually 5 a.m., sorry. And then a five for the day of the week, which is Friday. And then our command will remove all the contents from our temp folder. And the second task that I have here is to back up my pictures folder to Google Drive every night at midnight. So these are just two small examples for uh, how you can use what we learned here, but I'm sure you'll be able to find plenty of use cases yourself, but you can use these for, you know, system updates and all kinds of different things. Okay, so real quick, before we finish up here, let me give a couple more tips for using cron. 
So in this video, we've been editing our own user's cron task, but if we ever wanted to view or edit another user's cron task, then we can use the dash u option to specify which user. So for example, we could say cron tab dash u and you know, user two dash e. Now this would edit user two's cron task instead of your own cron task. Now, if you have any tasks that need to be run as a root user, then we can just put sudo before the cron tab. So for example, to view the roots cron task, we could say sudo cron tab dash L, and that's gonna ask for the sudo password, and we can put that in. And you can see that I currently don't have a cron tab for the root account, but that is how you would edit the root or view the roots cron tabs. So for example, to edit the root cron tab, you would just do a dash E, and then you're editing the uh, root user's cron tabs. Now, another useful command is being able to easily remove cron tasks. So, you know, if you've been playing around with your cron tasks while watching this video and would like to remove all of them, then you can do that either by, you know, deleting all of the contents in the file that you just edited, or you could just simply say cron tab dash R to remove. And if we run that, and now we do a cron tab dash L, you can see that now it says that we have no cron tab for our user, even though we saved everything that we were working with before. Okay, so there's one last thing that I'd like to show you. So I know that those schedules can be a little difficult to comprehend, uh, especially you know in such a short video. Um, but if you're still unsure how those schedules work, then there are some great tools online uh, where you can type in a schedule and it will do its best to translate that schedule for you. So one of the first results online is this crontab.guru. And in here we can add a schedule and it will do its best to tell us what that schedule is. So for example, we have five for the minute and four for the hour. So it's saying that it'll run at 4.05. And another cool thing here is that uh, the text is kind of small here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but it also shows an example of when the next time this uh, schedule would be executed based on the current time. And if you click this next value here, then it expands this out to show you the next five executions. So what this is saying here is that this is going to execute at 4.05 a.m. on the next five days. Now, if we were to change this to something like zero for the minute, zero for the hour, and then one for the day of the week, then now we can see that this is saying that it's gonna be on midnight on Monday. And our schedule here is saying that it'll be on midnight on the 7th, and then the 14th, and then the 21st, which I'm assuming are Mondays. So even if you're pretty comfortable with how the scheduling works, you know, using sites like this can give you some reassurance that you're putting in the right values and that you're scheduling your jobs exactly how you expect. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope now that everybody has a good understanding for how scheduling tasks through Cron works. But if anyone does have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.